Hi, welcome to the Southeast Seasonal Outlook for Spring 24. My name is Matt Lischke and I'm a Senior Ag Advisor with Local Land Services based out of the Goulburn office. In this video, I'll be stepping through seasonal conditions throughout the Southeast and how different areas of the region are shaping up for spring. We're seeing some really interesting trends at the moment, so let's jump into it. Before we look ahead into spring and what that looks like, I'd just like to spend a, a few moments here just looking at August rainfall. Um, this is a map from the Bureau of Meteorology and what we can see here is quite a dry uh, August throughout uh, uh, Victoria, uh, the bottom part of New South Wales and extending across into South Australia. So. Um, fairly, yeah, very dry conditions during August and we also saw a lot of wind, um, prolonged and persistent wind at the back end of August which really uh, increased the dry down in, in soil moisture uh, across the region which is showing up in our, in our moisture sensors. Interestingly, August rainfall as you can see there on the map was um, well above average for large parts of Tasmania and, and really saved Tasmania in a lot of ways. They were in a in a lot of trouble um, yeah, before before that recent rain. This map here is modelled root zone soil moisture produced by the Aura L model. Uh, and the Aura L model takes a range of factors into account, including rainfall, solar radiation, temperature, vegetation, soil type, and so on. Now, this map can be viewed on the BOM website, and to find it uh, from the BOM website, you can um, click on the Ag Services icon and then go to Water Information and then click on Australian Water Outlook. Um, and what this map does is quite interesting to look at because um, we can see here what, you know, an assessment, a real time assessment, it's a model assessment of what root zone soil moisture is doing. And what we can see here is that the map really does reflect the previous slide showing that dry August uh, trend throughout Victoria, Lower New South Wales and parts of South Australia. So we've just zoomed in now on that root zone soil moisture map into the southeast region. And what we can see here is that there are there is an area around Goulburn uh, that is actually showing really good soil moisture uh, heading into spring. And if we look at the, the colour code, it's, it's you know, around that average uh, long-term average soil moisture at the end of winter, which is a really great position to be in. Um, whereas, unfortunately, we can also see that a large part of the region is sitting below average for soil moisture, um, particularly areas to the west of the ACT um, and also down through the ACT and, and heading down through uh, onto the Monero. So, for those orange shaded areas that we can see, they're particularly the really dark orange areas, September rainfall is going to be really important uh, and producers will be closely monitoring rainfall forecasts in the coming weeks. For the rest of the talk, I'll be largely referring to the Farming Forecaster website. This website is freely available and contains both soil moisture and pasture forecasting information in certain regions throughout New South Wales, the ACT and Tasmania. The website can be viewed on both PCs and mobile devices, although I actually just find it a bit easier to read on a computer screen, um, just being because it's a bit larger. For first time users, when you go to this website, you will see a map of Australia. Um, and from here, just click on New South Wales and then click on your relevant LS region. Now we've zoomed in on New South Wales and we can see that the blue highlighted regions are those areas that are currently covered by farming forecasts. So now I'm just going to click on the southeast region. Once you've selected a region, this is what the home page looks like. And the first thing I just wanted to highlight is just circled there in red is a link at the top which says learn to use Farming Forecaster. And if you click on that link, it will take you to a collection of training videos. 
So as you can see, there are several videos in this uh, training series. Uh, and the reason why I just want to highlight this is because um, you know this talk will be a, a pretty quick snapshot and I don't really have a lot of time to go into the, the nitty gritty details. So if you have any questions, I strongly recommend watching the first four videos in this series in particular, as they will just really help your understanding about how to navigate around the website, how to interpret the information and so on. So yeah, really encourage you to check uh, that, that resource out. Alrighty, so now we're back to the home page and um, the before I move on, you'll also notice there's a login button at the very top right hand corner of Farming Forecaster. Don't worry about that login button, it's just an information portal for members of Tablelands Farming Systems and Monero Farming Systems. Um, but yeah, you don't need to actually log into this website to view the information. When you view the Southeast homepage, there is a drop down menu on that right hand side, which is circled. Uh, and that you use that drop down menu to select the site of interest. The list is in alphabetical order. So the first site that always pops up is Ando, which is one of the sites down on the Monero. Before we look at some example sites, I'm just going to click on the View Regional Map button to bring up all sites in the network. So this is the map view where we can look at the overall network of sites in the southeast region. And, and as shown in the legend down the bottom right hand corner, there are a, a, a number of coloured circles where we have a capacitance probe measuring soil moisture. And each of these probe sites also features a pasture forecast. You will also see a number of boxes uh, on the map. The boxes are locations where we don't have a moisture probe as such, but we do have a grass grow farm system and the boxes are showing the modelled plant available soil water. So if we look around the network, we can see that there's some pretty interesting trends and trends that are really backing up what the previous bomb map was showing where we, we can see quite good soil moisture around that sort of gold and yas area and further to the north, but then some dry trends extending out from that area, particularly to the south um, and more, more so even to the west, the western side of yas and the AC too. So what I'll do now is I'll just zoom in and let's have a look at the northern half of this network. So we're now zoomed in on the northern part of that network and really the big question at this time of the year is what are the chances of getting a spring? And having access to information like this where we have real time soil moisture and pasture forecast information really does help us to assess these odds. As we can see, there's quite a large variation in that northern part of the network at present. Uh, we have some, you know, a whole bunch of sites that are sitting really, really well in terms of soil moisture. We can see some green, some green um, pins there. So there are a range of sites, particularly between Gold and Yas and that further north, that are sitting really well at present and on track for a, a really good spring. Unfortunately, there are some sites that are really dry at the moment, uh, particularly on the western side of, of Bookham. So those, those sort of boxes across there to the far left. And the next three to four weeks out in that part of the world will be really critical uh, in terms of rainfall and getting pastures um, really going and, and preventing a failed spring. There are also a range of locations that are sort of, sort of sitting somewhere in between where spring's likely to be below average at this stage, but still manageable and not likely to require uh, abnormal action. So what, what I'll do now is I'll just zoom in on a couple of examples and I just thought I'd pick up uh, Gunning as one example and then um, Bungendore. Uh, and these sites are actually looking pretty good, like a lot of these northern sites at present. So we'll just have a look at those, and then by way of contrast, we'll go out to the far western side of the network, and we'll have a look at the Barramangra site. 
So now we've we've used that drop down menu to select gunning and for sites that have a moisture probe, um, and if you're not familiar with Farming Forecaster, this soil moisture information will always be in that top uh, left hand side under the probe heading, uh, which, which is here. So all the soil information will be sitting in that top left hand corner and the pasture forecast is on the right hand side. The soil moisture probe measurements are being measured uh, hourly um, by capacitance probes in the paddock, whereas the pasture forecast is modelled information from grass grow and is updated on a weekly basis. And it's, it's also important to note that the two things aren't really linked in any way. They are totally independent. So the probe is giving us measurements from a spot in the paddock, whereas the pasture forecast is driven by what we uh, grid and climate data. So it's essentially a pasture forecast for the local area based on a local soil type, pasture mix, stocking rate, and so on. Before we look at the pasture forecast, I just want to have a quick look at the, the probe information. So it's interesting that at Gunning, um, despite the warm and windy conditions of late, as you can see there, the soil probe is indicating there is actually still quite good soil moisture present at this site. And so uh, and when I say at the moment, it, I'm recording this on the 9th um, of September. So it'll be interesting to see how how those uh, percentage numbers change in the coming weeks, because obviously this is just a point in time measurement. Um, the other thing to really clarify here is, as you can see, the, the, these sensors have, uh, the sensors are different depths down the profile, like 10, 20, 40, and 60 centimetres. And so, for, for example, the, te the 10 centimetre sensor is telling us, or indicating how much moisture is at 10 centimetres. So it's not the amount of moisture above the plant in the top 10 centimetres, but it's at 10 centimetres. So if we were to go into the paddock and, and have a look at what the topsoil looks like and uh, in that top 50 to 60 mils, I suspect with the recent weather, it's, it's probably quite a lot drier than what those numbers are showing. Um, but that's just because, yeah, the probe doesn't pick up those that surface, that surface um, Few, few inches that that um, that top sensor is actually at 10 centimeters. The pasture forecast on the right hand side is produced by grass grow at the start of each month and shows projected green herbage for the forecast period, which is always that four month uh, ahead planning window. There are two versions of the pasture forecasts. So there's the, the climatology version and the access S version. And there's a little uh, eye icon down the bottom that if you hover that over that with your mouse, you'll get some text that describe the two different forecasts. Now for the purposes of this talk, I'm just going to use the climatology version, uh, but you can toggle between the two um, and just to compare and contrast. So the, the climatology version of the forecast is where grass grow uses daily weather data from the most recent 30 years to generate 30 potential pasture outcomes from the, the one starting point. And you can see that the starting point is off the end of the black line um, at the start of September. So with those 30 different possible outcomes based on the last 30 years of weather for that period, there's an equal chance of any of those outcomes occurring. And, and rather than displaying 30 potential pasture curves, which would look like an absolute mess, we summarize the 30 runs using percentile lines. And by default, the graphs on the farming forecast to display show the 50th, the 90th and the 10th percentile lines. And so those three lines, the, the blue, the yellow and the red uh, projection lines, they give us an indication of the likely spread in potential pasture growth and availability throughout the planning period. So in other words, the blue line is the 90th percentile. That's what could happen under extremely good growing conditions. 
um, the red line is where things could go under an extremely dry scenario. Um, and the yellow line is the median or the midpoint of those 30 runs. You can select which projection line you want to view. You'll notice there's some tick boxes there. Um, so given the forecast at present is only slightly above neutral, um, the long range forecast, the chances are really that we're probably most likely to follow somewhere near the yellow line. So to simplify things, I'll unselect the 90th percentile line it's, as it, because it's probably pretty unrealistic uh, that we're gonna follow that pathway. Um, so let's untick the 90th and, and keep things simple. So we've unticked the, the 90th percentile box. So now we're just looking at the, the 50th percentile line, the yellow line and the red. Um, and again, the, the big question at the moment at the start of a spring is what are the chances of actually getting a spring? The pasture forecast helps us make this assessment by comparing the projected lines and how they compare with history. And when I say history, that's represented by the shaded areas there in the graph. So in other words, does the yellow projected line track in the, the green shaded zone, which would indicate an above average spring? Um, does it track in the yellow zone, which is the 25th to 50th percentile range? Or does it head down into that red uh, territory, which is the bottom 10 to 25th percentile? So the past year forecast is really a traffic light system. Uh, are things looking okay, business as usual, if you like? Are uh, things looking tight but manageable? Or is the district heading into very difficult territory and we really need to be on the front foot? So if we were to summarise the current pasture outlook for the gunning district, um, looking at this pasture forecast, what the model is indicating is that our starting position where the black line is in terms of green feed in the paddock, as you can see, it's, it's fairly high there uh, coming out of winter and well above average, which is really picking up the, the good autumn um, conditions that this region experienced a few months ago. So starting off in a very good position uh, above average, and we can see that the yellow projection line, that 50th percentile line, uh, tracks largely in the green zone and peaking around late October. So at this stage, the Gunning District looks to be well on track for an above average spring. And that's largely driven by really good soil moisture at the start of the period and a, a fairly neutral looking um, forecast at this stage in terms of spring rainfall. It's important to note that the black line is updated weekly. So you can keep abreast of how conditions track through the month of September. And then at the start of October, a new forecast is produced and away we go again. So we've had a look at the gunning site. The other site that I wanted to quickly have a look at was Bungendor. And I've just put them side by side so we can compare and contrast here for a moment. The gunning soil moisture probe readings and the pasture forecast on the left, the Bungendor on the right. And if we look at those Bungendor soil moisture readings compared to gunning, we can see that it is looking relatively dry for this time of the year. Um, but even so, there's still you know, a little bit of moisture there uh, in the system. The other big positive note for the Bungendor side, a bit like gunning, is that the amount of green feed in the paddock at the start of spring, where that black line is, um, is, is above average, which has again been carried through by that, that good autumn conditions. Um, and the other advantage, I suppose, of having a a good autumn and, 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 and good levels of feed through winter is that stock will be in, in pretty good nick. If we look at the yellow projection line, um, a bit like gunning, is that we can see that it largely mimics the long-term average, which is the top 
of that yellow band. So at this stage, the odds are, for, for Bungan at this stage, the odds are pointing towards an average spring. Okay, so we've, we've looked at Gunning, we've looked at Bungandor. Let's now go around 40 k's west of Yass and have a look at the Berra Mangra site, um, which is on that western fringe of the network. So the first thing to note with Berra Mangra is that there is no soil moisture probe at this site. So that's why that top left hand corner under the probe heading is blank. Um, but this is one of those sites where we do have a pasture forecast. And if we reflect on the, the previous ones we just looked at and compare to this one, you know, as you'd expect, the Berra Mangra pasture forecast is looking very different. Um, starting off at around the black line, they're starting off at around the 10th percentile. Um, so much, much you know, well below the, the long-term average in terms of green feed. And we can see that black line is, is really dipping down and heading south due to uh, the drying conditions um, in that part of the world. So what the pasture forecast is indicating here is that September rainfall at this site is, is going to be really critical to keep pastures going. And, um, and so no need to panic at this stage, but certainly a situation that will need to be closely monitored in the coming weeks. If we get an average spring um, in terms of rainfall and we follow the yellow line, we can see there that peak herbage mass occurs around mid-October and gets up to around that 1,500 kilograms per hectare mark. So that, that wouldn't be a disaster and stock performance during spring will actually be quite good you know, during that spring period because of that trade-off between quality and quantity. So stock performance would probably tend to hold up quite well during that period. The catch is, however, is that when we don't get, when we get a, a, um, a below average spring or a well below average spring, the, that just means that we tend to run out of that carryover um, dead feed a lot quicker through summer, which increases our supplementary feeding costs and managing ground cover also becomes a real challenge, so. Yeah, one to really keep an eye on. Okay, so we're now looking back at the overall network. We've zoomed back out. And what I'll do now was we'll go down to the southern part of the network and have a look at a couple of sites on the Monero. So moving down to the Monero, we can see quite a bit of variation there. And um, generally seen a bit better soil moisture in the northern part of the network. Um, but also quite a, you know, a number of sites that are showing up red. So getting down to really low levels of, of soil moisture and really looking for a, a drink. What I'll do now is I'll just have a look at three locations to just home in on some variation um, in soil moisture and pasture outlook for spring. Uh, and I'll pick up Muniong, Mafra and um, Delegate. So starting off with the Muniong site, um, which is just northeast of, of Cooma, uh, the recent, if we look at the moisture probe information here, the, the windy weather has dried things about it a bit on top, um, but the probe is showing really good soil moisture uh, at present, and the recent mild conditions have really driven pasture growth. So that the, the soil moisture is really providing a nice buffer heading into spring. And if we look at the, the pasture forecast, we can see that those three projection lines uh, stay quite close together and uh, until late September, and then the moisture starts to become a factor again. And any rain that we get um, in the next sort of 10 to 15 days will just sort of further push that out. So sitting in a, in a really good position at present for both soil moisture and herbage mass. And the odds are definitely pointing towards an average to slightly above average spring for this location. Moving further south, now looking at the MAFRA site. 
Uh, like a lot of areas, rainfall in this region has been well below average for August and soil moisture has declined due to pasture growth. So on the positive side, there's been some good pasture growth in that Maffa region during August. Um, but unfortunately, lack of rainfall also means that soil moisture is now becoming you know, very limited. And if we look at the pasture forecast, it's indicated that spring and October um, could be pretty tough going with green feed getting down to, to low levels historically. And sort of the, if you look at that yellow projection line, it, it's sort of hovering around that um, the junction between the red and the yellow historically. Um, so it could be pretty, pretty tight in terms of feed in the coming sort of six to eight weeks. But also noting that, that November in this area is a key month. And there is still a good chance of achieving a spring um, in line with the long term average. If you look at where that peak spring production occurs, that yellow line in December, there is a chance it could get back up if, if November is favourable back up in line with that long-term average. So an area where producers would be taking a cautious approach heading into spring um, and keeping a close eye on the forecast. This is the final site for the Monero. It's, it's down at Delegate Station and um, look at the probe on the left-hand side. This site has received some really good rainfall in, in June and July, around about 120 mils in total, which puts some really good moisture in the system, in, the, in the, particularly in the top 40 to 50 centimetres. Um, and even though the profile has dried out a bit during August, there is still reasonable soil moisture there coming out of winter. If we look at the pasture forecast on the right hand side, um, it's, it's indicating that green feed is, starts off around the long term average, a little bit below in the, in the yellow zone, um, with the black line sitting around about a thousand kilos green. So it's sitting in an okay position, uh, and at this stage, there is a 50 50 chance that spring um, peak production will be somewhere near the long term average by mid December. Um, but rainfall in the next six weeks uh, will be important to drive growth and keep the black line tracking uh, in that orange zone. So what rain can we expect to see in, in the near future? This is a, a screenshot from the BOM website showing total forecast rainfall from the 9th to the 16th of September. And we can see that there is a, thankfully a bit of rainfall um, around which is which is looking promising um, on that sort of more coastal um, side of, of the southeast region with some some yellow and green sort of shaded areas there so that's sort of indicating 10 maybe up to uh, 20 to 25 mils but um, unfortunately it's there's not really much forecast on the the western side of the range Looking uh, further ahead at the back end of September, this is the now the bomb long range forecast, which was updated yesterday on the 8th of September and showing the chance of above median rainfall. These, these maps have actually improved a little bit in the last, um, since the last update. And for the southeast part of New South Wales, um, that pin drop there is just at Goulburn. But the forecast for the, the back end of September is actually looking uh, reasonably promising with either average or, or chance of slightly um, above average rainfall. So looking pretty good at this stage. And then if we move to October, there are some indications and in commentary that a weak El Nino could develop, which would increase the chance of spring rainfall. And the October forecast is, is picking that up and, and it's looking a bit more promising than the previous edition with a bit more of that blue shading over the eastern half of the country. So some good signs there that um, you know there is a, a fair chance that we are going to get some, some good rainfall in October. Um, but yeah, something to definitely uh, keep an eye on. 
So in summary, what we're seeing at the moment is a large variation in soil moisture across the southeast region. Some areas have very good moisture and are on track for an average to above average spring. Um, but unfortunately, there are areas also, as we've, we've seen, that are very dry at present um, and areas where September rainfall will be critical. So definitely a situation for those areas to um, not be panicked, but certainly be on the alert and keep a, a very close eye on how things progress in the coming weeks. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you found that uh, information helpful. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out. My details are there on the slide. Thank you.